Hi, I'm Nancy with On Points Tutorials, Tips and Tours. We're going to continue our demos from the West Michigan Quilters Guild Quilts on the Grand 2016 show. Our next demo is with Barb Bennett. She is the owner of Bench Creations in Hopkins, Michigan. She's going to show us how to paint a quilt block. So for this, it's paint and wood, not fabric and thread. Hi, I'm here to show you how to paint a barn quilt of your own that they're so popular on all the barns and garages and fences and post mailboxes and um, really popular. Michigan has 22 barn quilt trails, so we're very excited about that. The hardest part is choosing a pattern. I chose a simple pattern today to show you basic steps on how to get to the finished product. I use a, a primer and I prime my plywood which has A side and a B side and I sand both sides down and I use the smallest or the I'm sorry the smoothest side to do my creation and then I choose my pattern and I make a grid on my pattern and then I copy that grid onto my board. I use quilters rulers. I use the green tape that sticks, seems to stick very well. The first step in, in marking your board is to actually find the center. So I'm using a, a ruler that has an edge on it. And this board is 24 inches by 24 inches. I have them cut special um, at a local home center and I I mark which is 12 is in the center and I mark the 6 and the 18 because I know that my pattern is going to have to have four rows and then I would turn my board and I would mark them the other way just with a regular pencil and then I would start making my design continue making my design and I do use the rulers, the lines on my, on my rulers to keep my lines nice and straight. And I would just work my way around my pattern and continue on all the way around, matching my lines and my points. And after that, I would end up with something like this. I went ahead and painted the center square. I marked off this tape and I like to erase my marks after I've got my design. After I've got my design, I erase my marks. I just use a basic school uh, eraser and um, because the, the marks do sometimes come through the paint. I will show you, there's two different, there's different widths of the green tape. I like using the narrow tape simply because the wide tape is just kind of cumbersome. But when you tape your second color, you bring it back just a little bit off the edge and then you go ahead and you paint your second color up against your first color, of course. I'll just paint the edges and let you know that in a perfect world, the green tape does protect the previous color. In a not so perfect world, you go over it. But um, for the most part, you just kind of work around your tape you want a nice coat of paint. Usually I make two coats. You would just continue around, smooth it out like any painted project. And I'm not going to paint the whole thing simply because you guys know how to paint. <laughs> but I do remove my tape before my paint is dry as a rule. And like I said, in a perfect world, you would not have any lines. So I do that and I wanted to show everybody how to when you're matching when you have a, a section like this how you would cut that to block that green off. I 
Put the tape on the lines. Uh, and I use this ruler and a little cutter. Um, this probably isn't the best spot, but I do use the cutter and it's just an inexpensive cutter to give me a nice clean edge on my tape. So that's about the steps you would take as far as marking off your previous color and then your next color. I try to do all my, all the same colors. So you sometimes do end up taping a lot and then sometimes you end up over taping. But um, that's basically it. It's a real simple process. I'm just kind of rushing, but uh, a two by four, a two by two takes about two hours to complete. And after all the paint is dry, sometimes I do use the hair dryer to paint, to dry my paint because I'm impatient. Um, I do coat it after it has set for 24 hours. I do coat it with a clear coat. And then I also caulk and frame the edges. So that's basically it. Um, it's a fun process. It, they're really becoming popular. The green tape is not foolproof. You might have to retape or repaint, but in a perfect world, it's, it, it's good. Um, I guess that's basically it. So thank you. Um, have fun making one. We are doing uh, lots of workshops, and they're all over. So yeah, join us. Thank you. Like Barb said, in Michigan alone, there's 22 barn quilt block tours. So I hope you take some time, drive around the country, and see which ones you can find. Renee Savage from Renee's House of Quilting in Williamsburg, Michigan, which is just east of Traverse City, Michigan, has our next demo. She is an authorized dealer of AccuQuilt cutting machines, and she's going to show you the amazing things they do. Thank you, and welcome to the AccuQuilt demo today. I want to introduce you to what I think is one of the greatest inventions since the sewing machine. It cuts your cutting time by about 90%, and it's 100% accurate. So there's no more rulers slipping. There's no more the phones ringing and oops, you've cut your fabric wrong. There's no grandchild or dog bumping your leg or reading your ruler wrong. It does it all for you. But you still have the pleasure of handling the fabric and seeing your beautiful strips come together. So I would like to start by introducing you to the machines. This is the Go Baby. It takes all machines that are of the narrow width this is the go, regular size go, and it takes um, all of the dies that are a little bit wider. It takes actually 95% of all of the dies that AccuQuilt makes. Uh, this is the go big. It is the electric one. These are both hand crank, so you have to hand crank them through. So if you have a little arthritis or if you have a little shoulder problem, you probably will want to stay with the electric. So this is the electric, and to use it, all you have to do is flip it open and turn it on, and it's ready to go. The next thing that AccuQuilt has brought out, which is a fabulous way to start your collection of dies, are the Go Cubes. These cubes come in wonderful packaging. They're the, um, the six inch cube, the eight inch cube, and the nine inch cube will all fit the baby, the Go, and the Go Big. The 12 inch cube will only fit the Go and the Go Big. So the cubes actually come with eight dies that look like this. So you can see how cool, if you can see that, how cool all of the dies are. They're all numbered and they have pictures in them. The next set has another eight in it 
And then it also comes with a CD on how to use it, a book on the patterns, and it comes with a cutting mat. So everything is in your storage case. And these storage cases are very sturdy. One of the problems with all of us who have a lot of dies is how do we store them? You can't stack them, you might damage the blades. So this is an ideal way to start your collection and to store them because as you can see, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Okay, so now I am going to introduce you to how to cut your strips. Now, when we're strip cutting, and I'm doing this die simply because it's probably the most popular strip to use. All of us buy jelly rolls, or we have to put bindings on our quilts. Uh, the sashing on your quilt, the common size is two and a half inches. So um, this is the strip die. And as you can see on the strip die, you have a straight line here on the end. That's your starting line. So when you're running your strips, you should always run that through your machine first. If you forget, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. These diagonal lines that are on here are your 60, your 45, and your 33 diagonal lines to cut your diamonds for your star quilts for Hunter Star. You can even do a stack and whack on this if you pre-stack your fabrics. Isn't that great? No more fussing with your rulers. This line here, I'll show you. Um, so this line is an extra straight line, if you can see it, to cut two and a half inch squares. So if you don't want to buy a lot of dies, this die will actually cut your strips and your squares for you. The quilt behind me, this one, was all done on this die. And the white background on this quilt took me 20 minutes to cut. That's all. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the die on the bed, or I'll actually set it down here so the guys in the camera can come and see how I'm going to fold my fabric. This is a, a pretty little boutique that I found here at the show, actually. So, and what I've done is I've fan folded it. So I'm actually going through six layers of fabric at one time. What I'm going to do is line up my folded edge right next to the straight line on this end. We're gonna go on the straight line on this end. I'm making sure that all my blades are covered. Next, I'm gonna put my cutting mat on top of the die. This is so hard. Can't you see? It's so hard. And I press it through. Now it takes about 18 seconds for it to run totally through its programming. There's enough strips on here to bind a queen size quilt. We've done it. So I just, I just can't say enough nice things about how this works. So uh, I feel like a magician in the booth all week. So what you do then is a lot of people want to flip up their mat like this and pull it off. If you slide it off, your pieces all stay on the die. So you don't have anything going flying. You've got your little bit of waste on each side. And then you have all your perfectly cut two and a half inch strips. And there's all kinds of them here, as you can see. Um, well, it's a little bit more than a half yard because there's uh, three slots at two and a half inch each and I wanted to fan fold it three times. So it's more like 24 inches total. You have to do the math. All right, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to cut, I'll just leave it laying down, your two and a half inch squares. So what I'm gonna do is, again is I'm gonna fan fold here right on the die, going back and forth and laying this right on the die like that. I'm gonna take another strip because I wanna cut some diamonds to go with it. I'm gonna lay the diamonds just so that I'm catching the blades. And if you can't see it here, you can always come to the booth later. So I'm gonna do that. And you can, I'll show you, oh, show you out in the audience. Can you see everyone? Okay, put my mat back on. I'm going to run it through again. 
This is wonderful. It's so exciting because you can do multiple layers at one time. You can put your fabrics right sides together or wrong sides together when you're doing it. And it just goes right on through. And while usually while it's going through, what I do is I get my next piece ready to go. Okay, again, we're going to slide the mat off. And here we have all of these wonderful two and a half inch squares that would normally take you all day to cut. So there's your squares. Now, here are the magic diamonds. See all the diamonds? And they're all perfectly cut. And also I'd like to re remind everyone at this time, all your quarter inch seams are included in all of the AccuQuilt dies, unless it's an applique, all the half square triangles, all your drunkard's path, melon block, drunkard's path, everything that your quarter inch seam allowances are included. So we'll put this aside for now. And now I'd like to talk to you about a really great die that comes with a machine. It comes with a go machine. It comes with the middle one. It's this die. This die will cut your four and a half inch square, your two and a half inch square, and a two and a half half square triangle. Now you probably can see that there's a line drawn on here. AccuQuilt has told us to do that to remind you of straight of grain. You need to cut your squares and your half square triangles on the straight of grain. So I've taken a couple of pieces of fabric here. And I tried to pick something that was really bright and cheerful for everyone. And what you can do is you can put these together. I'm going to put them right sides together to show you how cool this is. So you put right sides together. And you have a long piece here now. See how we have this long piece? So you can fold it in half if you want, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Like this. Lay it on the die. And I'm actually going to lay it so that it's in the direction of the arrow so that you can all see that. We're going to put the mat on top, like that. Make sure that it's nice and straight. Then we're going to actually just give it a tug, and it's going through the machine. The other thing on the AccuQuilt, when it's cutting your half square triangles, or your tumbler block, or any of the other ones that have points, it cuts off all your dog ears for you. So all you have to do is line up your, your dog ears and make sure that um, they line up before you actually run them through your machine. So what I'm going to do now is actually pull this off. And so I didn't pull it off as neat as I wanted to for the camera, but that's okay. So here we have now, we have our two and a half inch squares. We have our half square triangles that are like this. And you have your four and a half, half inch square that goes with it. The quilt that's down here, you can see that this quilt was done with all squares and half square triangles and just how you put your combination together. It's a really nice sampler that works with this die. The dies come in all sizes, so if you don't want a two and a half, they make a three and a half, they make a four and a half, they make a five and a half, all the way up to eight and a half, half square triangles, squares, uh, circles, all of that sort of thing. So the um, next thing I'd like to show you that's really wonderful about the AccuQuilt is the applique. I love to applique. So what we've done here is we've got this really cool applique die with the pumpkins and the maple leaves. You can see that. And I'm going to have to grab over here really quick. And I've put fusible web already on the back of my fabric. Can you see that? Right and wrong side. Um, you can use any, any kind of, if you have a favorite, it doesn't matter. You can use anything that you want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to cover the whole die. 
I don't have to cover the whole die. If I only wanted to make a pumpkin, I could just cover the pumpkin part. But today we're going to do all of them. So again, I'm going to put my mat on top, just like that. I'm going to give it a little tug. And it's doing its thing for me. There are over 200 dies in the AccuQuilt library. And also, I keep forgetting to tell people this, if there is a shape that you want that they don't have, they will make it for you. Isn't that great? There's a, a we wanted a bigger die square for the store for working with the Shannon Minky fabrics to cut the Minky because it will cut the Minky. And they didn't have one. They do now. Do they have a tulip flower? They do have a tulip flower. They have a beautiful tulip flower. I think I have it with me, yes. So here we go again. Here are our pumpkins. Here's our uh, oak leaf, maple leaf, and here's a really cute little acorn. Although I would do the acorn in two colors, of course. So I'll do that one more time and show you now where you don't have to cut the entire die. The blades don't come up. The blades do not come up. What happens is, and that's a good question, I like to explain that. The blades are embedded in the die. So when you put your fabric on here and you put your mat on, the rollers push the mat into your, into your die blades. So it's just the reverse of when you're actually rotary cutting on your rotary mat. So now I only want to cut, let's cut the, the big one. Let's cut that pretty one. Nancy wants some of those. So we're going to um, just cover that, and then I'm only going to cover half the die. I, there, I'll leave that down so you can see. I'm only going to cover half the die, so, so, because there's no point in running the mat on both pieces if I only want one. I don't, I don't need the other one. So here we go. This is so cool. Kids love to do this. Little kids, big kids, they love to do this. And, and the grandmas that I've talked to that have this, these kids just love to die cut their own pieces. So here is a great maple leaf. If you can see that, and then I'll actually hold it up so you can see it out there. Okay? So if anyone has any more questions, you can come up afterwards and see me, or you can come to my booth. I want to thank you all for being here today. As Renee showed you, using the AccuQuilt machines and dies will give you the most accurate cutting. I must say, cutting out applique with those dies is my favorite thing. I hope you enjoyed these demos.